What's the point of network? And we're recording this as we celebrate 20 years of network. Now, I'm in the Scout Hall. I'm joined by a man who's probably got, I don't know, many names. I knew him as Rob. Then he started to be Chip. Now he's back as Rob. Now he is Beaver Leader, District Youth Commissioner. Also network. doing network, yeah. For, uh, like every Scout Leader, you probably know we have about five roles. We're never just the Scout Leader or the Beaver Leader. And um, I, I want to let you into a secret. Watch this. Jump up. <laughs> Jump up. Jump up. <laughs> I meant the... <laughs> All right, check this out. That's the actual height. The reason Rob is a bit taller than me is we went through the loft and we found a wooden box. Oh, look at that. Look at the box. And watch this. Now, Rob suddenly turns into six foot four. It's <laughs> good the magic. That's the, be prepared. That's the, the beauty of scouting. So, as I say, we're celebrating 20 years of network. And I thought, what better way than just me talk about network? Let's get someone who actually knows about network and who actually does network. Rob. Rob. Hello. Tell us about you. Uh, so, I am the District Youth Commissioner for Ealing and Hanwell. Uh, District Youth Commissioner, their job is mostly uh, promoting youth-shaped scouting. Uh, so that's actually the youth having their ideas rather than the leaders. Uh, and then when I was doing that, I thought a great way of actually kind of having more youth shaped within the movement was to actually encourage uh, the beavers and the scouts and explorers to stay on and become leaders themselves. And one of the great ways of doing that is through network. Uh, which is the section for 18 to 25 year olds. I'm not in that. Uh, I'm only just about in it myself, uh, which is quite sad. I've just started doing it and now I'm almost the age to leave it. Um, but it's just a great way of kind of actually uh, encouraging life skills with those who are 18 to 25. A lot of them have just gone off to uni, so it's not necessarily the most active section, uh, but it's just a great way of kind of teaching them more about being an adult and encouraging them to stick on with scouting and then hopefully still be a leader after they turn 25. Sounds good. As you know, I didn't really join scouts as a young person. I joined as an adult. So kind of explorers, I kind of know a little bit about explorers, but network, my experience at network is just like yourself, <laughs> going to the pub and just chatting. Is that what network's about? Or is it a bit more? Is it is it more or less just like, I don't know, explorers, but just for that extra, you're still going camping, you're still learning skills and stuff like that? So, I mean, the great thing about network is that you are all over 18, so it does mean you can uh, nip off to the pub or just have ah. alcohol at a campsite. It's great for that. Uh, but there is also the scouting element too. It's still got to have the balance. Uh, so, for example, this weekend, we're actually going on a camp to so do the, the Monopoly run. There's badges. Uh, there are some online badges, I believe. They're not as prevalent as they are with the younger sections, uh, but there are still the awards. So, for example, there is the Queen Scout Award, which is like the top award. Uh, and it's the one that I'm currently so working towards to myself. Can you do that just in network or, or do you have to do Beavers Cub Scouts Explorers? Uh, you don't have had to have done the younger sections. You can just do it as a member of network, uh, just as long as you've done it by the end of your 25th birthday. Uh, another award that there is in network is the Explorer Belt. And the Explorer Belt is basically the achievement of a lifetime where you actually take a 10 day expedition over a hundred miles have you done in it? an international country. I have so, done it. I've heard lots of different stories. Yes. What did you do? I did it in Madagascar in 2013. So a long time ago now. Did you uh, do but... like that? I've got to get from this point to this point with only one pound or whatever. Because I heard uh, stories like no, that. No, I've not done that. Mine was basically just you had to hike across 100 miles. And then you had, like, different challenges that you had to do on the expedition. Uh, so, like, one of mine was to help a farmer. Another was to meet the mayor. Um, so just a meet lot them of, there. Yeah, a lot of different challenges. Rock and roll. It, the Explorer Belt had nothing to do with your Queen Scout Award. Uh, it does count towards the Queen Scout Award. Because uh, there's a section of the award which is international. And the Explorer Belt does help count towards that. So if you're a regular listener, a viewer to Big Man in the Woods, you know how I digress and go off the avenue so much. I think I'm going to tap into this a little bit much, a bit more about the Green Scout Wall. But we'll get back to network. I'm jealous about Green Scouts. How come? Because One, because I've never done Scouts, yeah. Yeah, so I'm never going to be able to get it. And there are so many advantages. You can go to Windsor Castle yeah. to go and do all the awards. You go to the Cenotaph, you get invited to do that. 
if you're one of the lucky few, there's a whole lot of extra things that you can do only if you're a Queen Scout Award. And this might be the last year of a Queen Scout Award. Yeah, that is very true. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not saying nothing. But it's just it could be. complete it before then, yeah. What would happen then? Um, I'm not I saying if be... you're trying to work out this is a cryptic clue because me and Robin are not saying the obvious thing. But if this is the last time that you could do your Queen's Gate Award, what happens in between you were doing it and ah, London Bridge is falling down? That's the code word. I did not know that. There you go. That's the code word for when it happens. I mean, I guess it's going to be. The same award, like the same, but then it'll be a same requirements. But yeah, hopefully it won't make a difference, and hopefully I will finish it in the next month anyway. So, so what are you going to do? Uh, I've just got to do the last section, which is about faith. Uh, so I'm currently doing the faith badge with the beavers that I am a leader with, uh, and I'm also kind of founding out about my own faith and beliefs. But that's what happened in scouting. Scouting was started as a religious movement, wasn't it? There was lots of religion, yeah. but now we're in 2022. This there is a religion still involved but yeah. it's changed and, and it's, it's more about faith and what you kind of uh feel and believe yourself it's not necessarily about a specific religion what just... have you discovered in your journey uh so i've just discovered this i mean nothing to do with network but <laughs> i i've i've only had like one uh conversation with someone who's jewish and they were saying that actually the biggest factor for them is like the community feel um not necessarily about the beliefs and religion itself but just how it's a community yeah um and that's something I strongly believe in about community and scouting is a community in itself. Yeah, big family. Um, and so it's not necessarily about the religion. It's just what it brings mm. to your life. So do you think you wouldn't have discovered your own faith if you weren't doing this part of the belt? Uh, I think so. I mean, I know like I've explored a little bit myself in the past what my belief and faiths are, but I think this is definitely kind of, um, opening my eyes a little bit more to what I can take from other religions and bring to my own faith. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And I wouldn't have done it if I wasn't doing the Queen Scout Award. So what's Queen Scout Award got to do with Network? How do we get there? Uh, so the Queen Scout Award, <laughs> it's like the biggest award within scouting as a non-leader. Um, and so that's kind of what the aim is for most Network members to actually achieve that in the end. Because as you said, it's got a lot of benefits of like going to the Cenotaph and Windsor Castle. Windsor Castle. Oh, Palace. One of my friends who's um, actually Sam Longhurst um, is Queen Scout and he does like the, the Buck Palace garden parties yeah. and there's like a load of you. If you like that kind of thing, it's, it's amazing. Um, but it's just, I know, I think that's probably what's beneficial about doing your Queen Scout award, isn't it? Yeah. There's a load of little perks rather than just, oh, it's another badge. It's another, it's a new buckle, but yeah, there's loads and of perks. It's still just a sense of achievement, I think, because especially for me, um, like the Queen Scout Award you can start doing when you are 16, I believe it is. And so like for me, this is nine years of stuff in the works. Like my Gold Duke of Edinburgh counts towards it, my Explorer uh, Belt. So okay. it's a lot of stuff kind of all combined to make it finally be achievable. But can you join the network even if you don't want to do any of it? Yeah, you, you can just join the network as even a social. If you, if you just want a social thing, you can just join it as a social. We do like camps and, you know, activities, bowling, you know, we've done before in the past, before I joined even, there was like visits to a brewery and stuff like that. So if you just like alcohol. kind of, yeah, if you like alcohol, if you like kind of the <laughs> scouting kind of messages and themes, then that's a great thing to scouting join. Scouting messages, yellow card, green, is it green card? That's the alcohol one. Yeah, there's the orange card as well, yeah. And you're just talking about breweries, <laughs> alcohol, breweries. That's the other side Door of it pubs. too. So badges, let's talk about badges for network. What can we do? So if I can't, I can't join it. But imagine I, <laughs> I was 21 and I come up to you and say, I want to join that work. How would you sell it to me? I would sell it through the um, experience of, actually, as an adult, you have a lot more experiences in scouting, such as like the Explorer Belt. You know, it's a great opportunity to go to another country. Um, and even though, like, the things like the World Scout Jamboree for the under 18s, it's still also that thing of there's a push in network to volunteer as like you know the contingent uh, contingent leaders yeah. um, and also service crew. So there's still a big push within network to be involved within international scouting, and that's a lot of things that some people who are under eighteen might not have done in scouting. And so that's for me what the big focus is with network that actually you are also running it that you can choose if you want to say oh we're going to do this, you can. So for example, the network where I'm kind of 
helping them and guiding them in my role. They are wanting to do an explore about expedition to Argentina. And mm. I was just like, well, okay, if you want to go to Argentina, has, you can do Argentina. Has COVID put a big thing to that. COVID but has, I guess yeah. that's been a good thing because instead of just going, oh, we're going to go to Argentina, let's book our, our tickets or whatever online, boom, now there's more things you've got to do. Yeah. So with COVID, we were originally planning on the expedition being this year, but it's probably definitely a good job that we kind of pushed it back yeah. to next year just because with COVID, there hasn't been the time for fundraising and that's the big effect that it's had. You know, for example, we haven't been able to do bag packs in supermarkets. We were going to do a quiz just before Christmas to start on fundraising, but then of course Omicron happened and we were like, okay, before Christmas, no one will want to do that. So cut that as well. So that's been the kind of big effect on the fundraising. But um, And network, I guess, it's people at university that can't make a weekly commitment. Yeah. So, I mean, the aim is, like, from my perspective, is to try and do something monthly at least. Um, sometimes you're not going to have people actually able to do it. But if you try and do something monthly, it's kind of a good stand. Um, but even if you just do it once a term, like when they're back home, things like the Monopoly run, as I said, they're great because everyone is coming from all over the country to do it. Yeah. So there's no reason for people to come from, like, you know, wherever they're in uni. So you don't have to be an active scout member. Like, you don't have to be a Beaver leader or anything. You don't like that. have to be an you active can member. Just be in a network. Yes. Yeah, so, to be a network is also free membership. So, you don't have to pay subs. You'll have to pay for like events, but there's not like a set membership charge. Um, but with network, it's just something of you commit as much as you want to. Uh, so, say you are rough at uni, just then when you're not at uni in the holidays, you can say, to the other people who are in your network, let's let's, let's make a let's yeah let's let's do a bowling session. Let's yeah. go for a camp this weekend. And then, would you come to a scout session like tonight and and run things, or is that you have nothing to do with any um, any sections? It's encouraged for the network to do it. Um, so, for example, me as I said, I'm still currently a network member, and I am kind of wanting to do that not just within my beavers but also go to an explorer session and do maybe a session about the queen scout award and to kind of try and convince them to stay on with network because there's often a big drop as soon as they turn 18 a lot of members do just leave explorers and then never come back so bridging that gap and making them stay on a network does have that effect that they then stay on as leaders too and i guess if you go to uni another part of the uk you're still kind of in contact yeah. with that kind of scouting feel yeah. and that, that keeping that Connection with Scouts. Yeah. So 20 years of, of network, 20 years of Explorers, um, February last week. Um, what's changed in those 20 years? Uh, I think at the start, I mean, I'm not really old enough to remember network when it started. Um, but I think network, it's been, you know, a rocky kind of uh, rocky path. It's not the most established network, um, not the established, most established section. section. Mm -hmm of scouting like you know beavers you've got hundreds and thousands of them network no waiting know, list no waiting list um <laughs> like why we, why is that is i it think it's not people aren't more aware of network or is it just i don't know i think it is a thing of some people aren't aware of network like i think for a lot of people as soon as they hit 18 they don't know what there is after explorers so they just leave yeah. um or they think the other option is to become a leader and sometimes for 18 year olds the prospect oh, cool. of having responsibility is a little bit like i don't want to do that um but i think also it's, it is to do with going off to university um a lot of uh universities around the or around the uk have an organization called sago which is like the scouts and guides organization for uni students um but a lot of people do that rather than actually joining network. It is tough, especially because then it's them having to go off on their own accord to try and find the network in their new area. Uh, so it's difficult for them. And like, I know when I moved to Ealing, there wasn't any universe, um, any Sago or network really active at the time. So I just became a leader instead. Yeah. Um, but for some people, they wouldn't necessarily make that move to look for themselves. Because it's a big commitment, isn't it? If you're doing yeah. your uni, you've moved from the other end of the country to London or wherever you are. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's tough. Like, a lot of people don't want to be a leader whilst actually at uni because that's a lot of responsibility that they might not be able to take on. And also training. Yeah. You've got to do that training within three years, as well as your uni work. Yeah. And, yeah, it's 
if you're only going to do it part time or whatever, what's the yeah. point in putting all that time? In I mean, that's why network can be great because it then still kind of keeps you involved in scouting. Yeah. But without actually having to be there on a weekly basis, without having to do any of the leader training, you're just literally there. You turn up, you can do a camp, you can do some climbing, you can do whatever you want, but, you know, less regularly. What we want to know is how many of you are watching this and are part of network or have never even heard of the network because it's it's only recently that Rob has restarted it in in the district where we are. I'm trying to explore it a bit more in the in the county. So how how popular is network where you are? Are you a member of it? Are you like Rob, a section leader, <laughs> network, and all the other things, or are you just part of the network? It'd be, it'd be really interesting to see how many people around. Um, the UK, and then let's explore it to about around the world. Are there, uh, that's a question, actually. Are there network around the world, or is it just the it UK? It depends on the section um, and like the different sections. I think in a lot of countries they do have sections from eighteen to twenty-five, but sometimes they're joined with explorers. Rovers. Where yeah, where it's like and, and just extend it on the end. Yeah, um, and then I think network is only like network in the UK. Okay. Cool. Well, Rob, thank you very much for joining us here on Big Man. Thank you. Learning about network, learning about Queen Scout Award, learning about Explorer Bell. Uh, once again, Rob, thank you very much. Uh, let's go and get some. Pancakes. Thank you for having me. No worries.